Hi everyone, welcome to Dental Salon. I'm Jorge. As we know, intraoral scanners are becoming a very popular piece of equipment in the dental industry. Dentists usually use intraoral scanners to capture intraoral data, replacing the traditional method of physical impression taken, which may cause patients to vomit or suffer from nausea. Intraoral scanners are also cost-effective and time-saving by getting rid of several traditional steps, such as transporting impressions, making models, scanning physical models, etc. With these advantages, it is becoming more and more widely accepted by dentists to turn to intraoral scanners and start their first step of digital diagnostics and treatment. So in today's episode, we will talk about how to make sure the accuracy of the scan occlusion data is correct. To begin with, let's talk about the occlusion. What is the occlusion? Occlusion is a relationship between the maxillary and mandibular teeth when they approach each other, during chewing or at rest. It is very important and it plays a critical role in speech, mastication, breathing, and skeletal alignment. To capture an accurate occlusion through the use of an intraoral scanner, there's a bunch of things that we need to consider. In this slide, we illustrate some common problems of occlusion data during intraoral scanning. These two photos show the upper and lower archers intersecting. In the left photo, it's very obvious. In the right photo, the red arrows indicate the intersecting data. These two photos show the gingiva that is intersecting shown in the red frame. These two photos show the occlusion that is deranged, the left one, or elevated, the right one. So what problems will the confused occlusion lead to our treatment? Topic number one. The two photos above show the occlusion in the posterior zone is a little open while the occlusion of interior is suitable. For lab technicians, if there's no intraoral photograph or no obvious occlusion wear, it is hard to make a judgment as whether the scan data is consistent with that in the mouth. If a rescan is not possible, as the patient may have already left the clinic, the most common method is to print out the model and reconstruct the maxillary frame to determine the correct bite. The lower three photos show all slides, including the left, front, and the right sides were often open. Without the accurate value of the empty occlusion, there is no way to make an accurate restoration. The upper two photos show that without an accurate occlusion, there is insufficient occlusion or final restoration. The lower two photos show that the case without the accurate occlusion leads to some uncertainty during the CAT process. The inaccurate occlusion results in the emptiness or elevation of the final restoration, which leads to long-time occlusion adjustment and brings a poor dental experience to patients. Now, we will discuss the reasons that lead to finalizing a restoration with unfitted occlusion from two perspectives. One is the clinical, the other one is the lab. From a clinical perspective, first, the occlusal relationship was not captured accurately during the scanning process. In these cases, we suggest that when scanning the occlusion, it is necessary to confirm the accurate occlusion relationship first, then to click the start button to begin the scan. During the scan process, we can hold the patient's jaw by hand to ensure the patient's occlusion is fixed and does not move. Second, the scan range of unilateral occlusion is too large. The upper two photos show that too much data at one time when scanning had been collected during the occlusion scan. We suggest selecting the suitable occlusal range. If the patient is scanned for full mouth data, we recommend that the occlusal range of the left and right sides are to be captured with two to three teeth on each side, like the lower two photos shown. Besides, the occlusal accuracy of the region of the left teeth is higher than the one with the edentulous region. Third, there's excess soft tissue data in the working model. The left side photos show that there's soft tissue data that covers the abutment. It is recommended to capture the gingival data with four millimeters below the margin line. The right photo shows the scan data with the gingival information. One more thing, do not forget to activate the AI function when scanning our patient. Then the excess soft tissue will be removed automatically. Fourth, there's excess soft tissue data when occlusion aligns. The left side photo shows upper jaw information that is intersected with the lower jaw here in the red frame. We suggest to remove the excess data when scanning the occlusion, making sure there is no interference during the process, otherwise it will affect the occlusion accuracy. The right photo shows the correct one, which the data is clear when scanning the occlusion. Now let's talk about the errors from the lab side. There are common errors during the occlusion data transmission from clinic to lab. For cases with over two units, orthodontic treatment, full mouth reconstruction, final restorations, the occlusion is not always stable. It is recommended to capture a full arch scan to provide the maximum amount of occlusal data for optimal alignment. 
If possible, a wax rim bite can also be provided to the lab to assist the dental technician in determining the patient's occlusion more accurately. Now, let's recap what we've been talking about in this episode. We made an analysis of the reasons which may cause an accurate occlusion from the clinic side, the lab side, and the problems that result from incorrect occlusion. Meanwhile, we provided some tips to avoid these problems with hope that it can help you get an accurate occlusal scan. Once again, thank you and stay tuned for more tips in our episodes.